this entitled single mum destroys an apartment soundproofing and then has the nerve to complain that her neighbours are being too noisy. But the neighbours are the ones who get the last laugh. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. Another post reminded me of my best friend's first foray into property ownership. While I never lived with them, I visited a couple times a week, on average, and saw this behavior firsthand. My bestie and her husband bought the first floor of a two-family house that had been turned into condos. Word of advice, never buy into a two-unit condo association. I've seen in several times and it's never ended well. Anyhow, all was fine for the first two years, until the upstairs unit sold to an epically entitled single mother and her toddler son. The first thing the single mother did was rip out the carpeting, all the layers of noise proofing under the flooring, and refinished the crappy subfloor to be her flooring. Her excuse for this was allergies and not being able to afford proper flooring. Maybe don't buy an expensive condo in a trendy neighborhood then. Anyhow, this left her basically nothing between her unit and the lower unit that would muffle any sound at all. Every single time she could hear anything from downstairs during certain times, she flew into a screaming rage and came banging on their front door. She expected absolute silence between 1pm and 5pm because her son took his nap somewhere in there depending on when he got tired. Also between 7pm and 9am because kiddo was either sleeping or winding down for bed in that time period. Sometimes she'd flip out outside those hours at random because she was was an entitled jerk. The quiet hours in the condo agreement were 11pm to 7am, just for the record. <laughs> Not that she cared. Some of the things she came screaming to complain about that I personally witnessed in the daytime or early evening, the times I was visiting that did not overlap with quiet hours, included most any conversation at a volume above a whisper, running the garbage disposal, dishwasher, washer, dryer, blender, or basically any appliance. Even the ding of the toaster was too much. Vacuuming, having the television or music on at any volume, playing the piano or acoustic guitar, talking in a normal speaking voice, opening or closing doors, not even remotely slamming, their cats playing chase around the house, eating meals, <laughs> the clatter of utensils on plates. She wanted them to use all plastic or disposable paper as it was quieter, phones ringing or vibrating too loudly, usually when left on a table or something that amplified that noise a bit, doing yoga, washing dishes by hand, sneezing, walking too hard. Any walking was called this if you stepped on one of the creaky floorboards in this 100 year old house. Having the compressor on the fridge come on, it made a tiny thunk and a dull hum like most do. The ice machine being used to dispense ice or it dumped ice as part of its normal cycle and flushing the toilet. Worse, her kid was a tantrum tossing, caterwauling type who liked to beat toys against the floor. There being nothing between the floors anymore that muffled any sound, my bestie and her husband were subject to this insane noise at full volume at all hours. Any mention of it caused his entitled mother to launch into a tirade about how he was just a kid, how hard it was to be a single mother, and what did they expect her to do? Well, um, put the noise proofing material back, which wasn't even allowed to be removed per the contract. Given it was a two unit condo association and entitled mummy wouldn't vote against herself, there was nothing they could do except sue, which they couldn't afford at that time and would have only served to escalate things further. This wildly entitled mum made their lives so miserable with her constant beating on their door to scream at them at all hours that it took about six months for them to put their condo on the market and move. The entitled mother was thrilled about this and gloated about the horrid noisy people leaving since they lived in a very trendy and up and coming town, they got several full asking price offers. The one they accepted wasn't the best offer as the terms were extremely fussy and specific, but the seemingly entitled couple that made the offer was also extremely pregnant. My bestie and her husband moved to a single family home where they were free to flush whenever they wanted. We all still have a laugh now and then, imagining the war zone of feuding entitled parents in the old place. I love the beautiful irony in this story, that the entitled single mum upstairs complained so much that she kicked the neighbours downstairs out. She basically drove them to insanity so they had to move. But what did she think was going
going to happen. She can't control who moves in downstairs. And if the people moving in are pregnant and gonna have a baby, well, what is she gonna do? Ask them to stop their baby from crying when they're born? That's not going to happen, is it? So good luck to you, lady. You just made the situation a lot worse for yourself. So this just happened today, and the entitled mum here is unfortunately my mum. My brother, my aunt and I rode with her to get an oil change and a tyre with the intention of going to the store afterwards, which never happened after her temper tantrum. The garage she went to is entirely Hispanic owned. The guy she usually gets to put her tyres on and stuff wasn't there. Not sure why she didn't just leave then and avoid the whole situation, but there were two other boys there. I say boys because one was definitely a child and probably probably middle or elementary school. The other, I'm not entirely sure if he was an adult or not, but he looked very young. Again, not sure why she didn't leave. When speaking to them, their English was very broken, and I could immediately tell they couldn't speak it very well. It was limited to simple words. They changed the tire just fine, but something went wrong with the oil change. Something was wrong with the screw on the oil pan, I think. After what happened, I think he was trying to say it was stuck. All he could tell us was the screw is broke. First off, she became very clearly upset, understandable if your car is broken. But instead of understanding that he cannot fully answer her in English, she and my aunt continue to badger him and the younger boy. Then becoming more frustrated, she goes over to this random group of men, she's always seen men as the saviour, and tries to get their help. Whatever she's told them has riled them all up and they just come over screaming and swearing at these boys who cannot fulfill their request to tell them the problem because they don't speak English. She pulls the typical, let me speak to your manager, a few times throughout this ordeal. The manager wasn't there. Eventually one of the guys goes under the car with the older boy and he has to point to the broken screw. My mum then hops in a car with another guy to go buy a screw. These guys are total strangers. She came back with a screw but the boy didn't put it on the car. He went back under the car and appeared to struggle with something for a while. Again, why I think he was saying the screw was stuck. And eventually came back out and stopped working on the car. She asked if he was going to finish. He told her no and something like wait for the boss in broken English. At this point, she's livid and decides it's a great idea to call the cops. With the current climate and all of us being minorities, this extremely bothered me, but not gonna get too political. The cops came and she pulls all of her woe is me cards. Whenever things don't go her way, she starts telling people she has a heart condition and about her pacemaker and her heart functionality to gather sympathy. Remember what I said about the group of guys? She was extremely close to all of them for an extended period of time with no mask on. Not even when she got in the car with a guy, flat out hugged a store manager who wasn't wearing a mask earlier and refused to wear her mask over her nose if she bothered with it at all. She just flouted all social distancing while being at high risk, so she's definitely concerned about her health. Then she goes on about how her babies have been waiting outside in the heat all day. Babies? I'm 20 years old and my brother is 17 going on 18. The shop owner's girlfriend arrives after the cops do because the boys called the owner upset. She speaks English and manages to translate what is happening. My mum is still not satisfied. Cops eventually leave for another call, and my mum should be leaving, but instead decides to chat with another random man complaining about the shop and having a full tantrum, really. The woman tells her to leave the other customers alone and that she needs to leave. My mum goes off about this. She calls this woman every name under the sun and threatens her. Forgot to mention earlier, my grandparents showed up at one point and my grandmother had to tell her to leave to keep her from hurting the woman or getting hurt. Side note, for some reason she took this as my grandma taking her side and telling her she's not worth it, when in reality, my grandma was scolding her for getting off the property. My mum also never paid for the tire the younger boy installed. She's been complaining about the events ever since and has somehow come to the conclusion that the boys spoke English because they answered simple questions 
and because the woman spoke English, they must speak English as well. I want to try to go pay them next week. Didn't have it this week partially because my mother demands money from me, but that's another story. It's as if this entitled mother thrives on drama or something. Like they said, why didn't she just leave straight away? This is obviously a situation she didn't want to be in in the first place. It's like she was looking for an excuse to be trouble. And those poor kids that are working on the car. My guess is that their parents are making them do it. I'm assuming that they're getting paid something for it though. But then even when they go through all this trouble, they probably didn't actually get paid for this one because the mother didn't pay for it. I hope OP was able to get some money to them in the end. I started working at a dog grooming salon a few months ago, and I'm not quite a groomer yet. My job includes trimming nails, cleaning ears, brushing, bathing, and blow drying the dog. Sometimes, if the dog's coat is matted, I'll do what's called a pre-shave, where I do a quick and messy shave to get most of the hair off before the bath. And I'll do that because it'll cut drying time in half. We didn't close for the virus, so we've been and stayed extremely busy, especially now in the summer. People want summer cuts for their long-haired dogs. By the way, your double-coated dog does not need to be shaved, no matter how hot it gets. Saturdays are our busiest day. We have some fancy groomer tubs in the next room over that people can use to bathe their own dogs for $10, and they get a discount on add-ons like nail trims if they use the tubs as well. The thing about that is there are only three people in the salon, and we have three tables. So if someone who doesn't have an appointment wants a nail trim, we have to stop what we're doing and get the nails done. It only takes 5 to 10 minutes to do nails, depending on the dog, but that's 5 to 10 minutes that we're keeping the appointment dog longer. For more context, I'll explain how long it takes me to do the things I need to do. Nails, like I said, takes 5 to 10 minutes. A pre-shave takes from 15 to 45, depending on how matted the dog is. If I need to de-shed a double-coated dog, that takes a good hour. Brushing can take anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes, depending on the size of the dog and how much they'll let me brush them. All that is before the bath even, which takes 10 to 30 minutes and blow dry takes 15 to 45 minutes. And that's just before the actual groom. Plus we schedule our dogs so that we can have two coming in every hour. We work up until two. So if I'm spending 30 minutes to an hour on dog number one, dog number two is sitting in the kennels waiting for their turn. The other two groomers can and do help me out with pre-shaving and getting the dog ready for the bath when we're busy. But most of the time, they have their own work. By the way, it takes a good hour for them to do the groom itself. And we'll give you a good estimate on when you'll be able to pick your dog up. If we know a small, well-behaved dog is going to take up to an hour and a half, but we have a big or naughty dog in line before your small dog, we'll tell you it's probably going to take up to four hours to get your dog out of here. Most people understand that. We have appointment times for a reason too. If your dog has an appointment at 12, but you bring him an hour early, we're not going to be able to get to him until his appointment time. I shouldn't have to explain that, but I do. Most people just bring their dogs in early because they have other places to be, and we'll be happy to keep your dog in the kennels until we can work on them, but that doesn't mean that their dog will be done an hour early. So with all that background, let me set the scene. It's Saturday. People are stopping us every hour to do a nail trim. Plus, if someone calls us and asks to speak to a groomer, we have to stop working on the dogs as well. Lots of extra nail trims. Lots of people calling to ask if they can set up an appointment, etc. Luckily, I don't think we had many big or double-coated dogs that Saturday, so that's good. The first thing I noticed about this Karen as she brought her pom mix in was this lady's blue eyeliner and how good it looked. Like, wow, lady. Even I can't pull off blue eyeliner like that. Congrats. The dog's name started with an S and it was a perfectly sweet little dog. The thing is, Karen's appointment was at 12, and she brought us in at 11. We said sure, no problem, but we won't start on her until her appointment time, and Karen said that was fine. We also let her know that we were pretty busy that day, so it would be a good couple of hours before S was done. Karen said that was fine. S was sweet and well behaved. The only problem I had with her was that she had long hair, and she didn't need a pre-shave, so drying took a long time, and S didn't like it when I pointed the blow dryer at her 
her front half. Lots of dogs don't. I don't take it personally. She never tried to bite me. All she did was squirm. And my tether is pretty crappy, so she was getting loose a lot. I thought, hey, no problem. She's mostly dry, so I'll just put her in the kennel dryer to dry completely while the groomers are busy with the other dogs. So I did that, and then I got my next dog out. While I'm doing my next dog, Karen calls us. The cashier who initially answers the phone and then directs the call to us if he needs to, said Karen was very combative right from the get-go. Excuse me, I would just like to know where the heck my dog is. So he transfers her to the salon. I'm not really allowed to answer the phone because I'm so new. So R answered. Apparently Karen repeated herself to R in the same manner. What I'm giving to you now is what R said Karen said. And I could hear R saying, Okay, who's your dog? S, she's been there for like four hours already. Are you not done with her by now? R asks me about S. I explain she's in the kennel dryer getting completely dry because she didn't really like the blow dryer. Okay ma'am, it looks like S is just in the kennel dryer. She just got finished with her bath and she'll be ready soon. Why aren't you working on her now? It's been long enough. We like to make sure the dogs are completely 100% dry before we start the groom to prevent molding in the coat. S didn't really like the blow dryer so she's in the kennel dryer right now ma'am. She's going to get worked on next though. Apparently Karen lost it at that. I've been taking S to the groomers her whole life and nobody has ever told me that she's been uncooperative. Ma'am, I'm not lying to you. Well it's been four hours. How are you not done yet? Ma'am, Saturdays are our busiest day. We have people coming in for nail trims and Karen interrupts her. I don't see what that has to do with S. R was trying to explain what that had to do with S and a different dog started barking in the dryer kennel. I can hear her crying. What are you doing to my dog? Ma'am, we're not hurting her. She just doesn't like the kennel dryer very much. I don't even think that is S crying back there. I want to talk to your manager right now. Unfortunately, our manager doesn't work on Saturdays. You can call back on Tuesday if you want to talk to her. Give me her cell phone number. I actually can't give out my manager's personal information. If you want to talk to her, you can call back on Tuesday. And then Karen hung up. Me and the other groomers were like, what the heck? Because we could only hear half of the conversation. The cashier even joined us to talk about how crazy she was. It's a shame because S was such a sweet little dog to have such a crazy owner. I went home before the groomers got done with S, but apparently she sent her husband to pick her up. Karen was probably the craziest person we've had to deal with since we started working there, but we get many more entitled people. That honestly sounds like a really high stress situation for a job. I can imagine a lot of dogs being not very cooperative and their owners not caring very much. Seeing as how much the time can vary from one dog to another, yeah, I can imagine a lot of entitled dog parents getting really annoyed at you for something that's not your fault. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.